Hey everybody, welcome to CMath Run, the Casio Prism channel. I'm going to um, do, your eyes did not deceive you there, I'm going to do the first comparison video, and I, don't, I didn't want to do these. I don't want to compare the Prism to what's currently out there, what's currently available, but I know there's a lot of students out there, a lot of teachers using the TI-83, 84, 84 Plus, uh, great piece of machinery, but I just think that the Casio Prism uh, does things that the other calculator just will not. So um, a lot of questions have been coming. I've been using an 83 for a long time. How do you do this? What's so different about the Prism? So we're going to do uh, the first of a com series of comparison videos that uh, will show you if I can do this on the TI. What do the keystrokes look like? What is it... Uh, that I have to do in order to be able to do the same thing on my on my prism and then I'll show you some of the things that prism can do that the uh, TI cannot do the TI 83 one of the it's a solid piece of machinery but I think the uh, prism just takes it to an, a whole nother level and it's really really easy to use so one of the big questions is always well I want to graph an equation and I know how to graph an equation on my 83 on my 83, you press Y equals. I'm going to turn off that stat plot that's turned on there. Turn that off. I want to graph an equation like uh, 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Press enter on my 83, and then there's a graph button right there. So just press graph. I gotta go zoom back out, so I want to go back to my initial window here. So I wanted to go to like zoom standard, which is number six. And I'm not gonna go through the button pushes on those, but that's basically how you do that uh, to get the graph there. So on the uh, prism, I'm in my main menu here. Notice there's a menu item number five to graph, so I go into number five. I could either press the number five or just go to number five. I'm going to type in that same equation, the 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Immediately you're going to notice a couple differences. Squared looks just like it does in the textbook. This one's a little hard to see, but that's a little slightly smaller. It's still not bad. Notice these script X's. We got regular block X's here. Again, uh, more pixels will allow you to do more things. Press execute. That means it's live. So now it turned blue. And now I have a draw button that shows up. I'll press draw. There is my parabola in the nice blue. My window is slightly different. If I want my window to look the same as a 10 by 10, I want to look at the view window, so I'm going to press Shift F3 for my view window. And the uh, TI, I had a standard window, which is a 10 by 10. And the Casio, if I wanted a, uh, an initial window, the initial window makes it twice as wide as it is tall, more or less, because of the high pixel count. This is like a high-res TV where you've got uh, more pixels going one way than the other. So this way things will not be distorted in the initial window. In the standard window you'll get your regular 10 by 10. I'll go ahead and draw that. Notice again, notice the difference here. We've got a, a much finer resolution here. Very pixelated, very bumpy. Again, for the time this was awesome. But uh, now let's see about finding the intersections here. So we want to find the zeros of the function. So on the TI, finding the zeros, you go second trace or calc. You press F2. And then you're supposed to tell it high or low, but this emulator apparently is not working right way, the right way. But on the uh, 83, you're supposed to give it a, a high value, a low value, then a guess, and then it'll give you the, the root. In the Casio, we have a G-Solve, which stands for your graphic solver. I press G-Solve. I want to find the root. Notice the vocabulary is right there. I want to find the root of the equation. I didn't have to do anything. didn't have to give it a left or a right. 
And I know there's more than one, so I press the over arrow, and there's the other. Same thing happens if I want to find the maximum or minimum in this case. I want to find the minimum, the lowest point. I just press minimum. As long as the, the minimum, maximum, whatever it is that you're looking for, as long as it's in the domain of the function, if it's in the X's, it'll find it. This is not using a computer algebra system. I've been in some arguments with some people that tell me that the only way the calculator can possibly do this is by doing some calculus behind the scenes and saying that this is a computer algebra system. This is not a computer algebra system. You and I can write a program that has the calculator search between the maximum and the minimum x values and find that lowest point. So you could, you could do it. You can have the calculator find those minimum points. This is a much faster processor than we've seen in previous versions of calculator. So that's why this one seems so incredibly fast if people don't believe it. Again, just because it can do this on this calculator doesn't mean you can't do it on the other ones. If you've got a Casio 9750 or a 9860, they work very much the same. If you're going back even further than that, 9750 early versions, um, there's the SD version, there is uh, 9860s, 9860 Slim, there's the FX2. They all work pretty much the same and about the same kind of speed. They are very, very fast finding things like this. But um, TI, very, very good calculator, but again, there's just some things it won't do. If I wanted to find an intersection with y equals x, go ahead and graph that. Okay, now I've got two graphs that are both in, in black, very pixely. If I want to do that in my Casio, so I want to go back out there, I just want to put it in y equals x, excuse me. Go ahead and draw. Now you notice the difference. Being a teacher, I love this. I see the difference in red and blue. Again, if I want to find the intersection, TI, you went into second calc. You wanted to find the intersection. You had to tell the first one. You had to go down and tell it the second one. And then a couple of enter, enter, enters, and things like that. Here, you go into G-Solve. I want to find the intersection. You notice the vocabulary is right there. Calculator will find the intersection. There's one point. There's the other point. Another thing I haven't shown you yet is if I press execute, it will plot the points right on the screen since it is high resolution. You can see them. Here, I wouldn't be able to plot those points on there because my pixel space is being used up by uh, the graph. So I, you can't do everything when you have low pixel count. Much higher pixel count, you can do this a lot easier. You can plot those points, and plus you get the little dot, and you get the information on the top. What equations are you looking at? What is it that you found? I got the intersection. I got the value of the intersection. I got the points of intersection. I got the graph all on one nice screen. A little tough to do when it's on a screen like that. Uh, what else have I had my students do with graphs? You could do, if you're looking at a series of different x values, let's say you wanted to make a graph with um, a couple of x values here. To try and illustrate what is happening with my slope, I use the squiggly brackets. In the Casio, I'm going to do one better. Again, this is something I can do in other Casio models as well. Let's call the modify feature here. This is a great feature. Uh, I'm going to put in the equation for the equation of a line, or I'm just going to put in MX. So I'll put in alpha M X. Press Execute, locks that in. I've got a button called Modify. Modify will do just what it says, which is lets me modify or change my X values. Now, right there, you can see the yellow line that was there before. So that is the previous value of M. If I'm going up, you'll know that this was 2. Now it's 3. What's the change of the slope? What's the change of the slope? 
there's also a menu item on the Casio which lets you automate this. So if I was to go into men menu and go into Dynagraph, the Dynagraph stands for Dynamic Grapher. I gotta make sure I select that first function. It says it's going to dynamically graph, so I'm going to set this up to graph between 1 and 5. And go ahead and dynamically do this. Now what it's going to do is basically create a movie where it's going to animate. It's going to show, okay, M is 1, there it is. M is 2, there's where it was at 1. The yellow line showing up. And it's just going to jump between 1 and 5 and just keep going over and over again. And you notice it highlights it in red, things like that. Again, a little tough to do on a black and white screen, but it's a very powerful feature. So uh, that's just a quick look at, well, how do you graph these things? How do you make it do some of the things I used to do on my TI? That's just a quick, well, how do you graph tutorial. I'm going to do a video, another video tonight. The second video has been by request, specifically for somebody who requested how do you... Uh, graph a function that's different. Alright, thanks. Keep those requests coming.